I jolted awake, the cryopod seal opening. I sat up fighting waves of nausea. Another awakening, another crisis. That's how it always went on the resilient. Commander Trent, report to the bridge immediately. Captain Frost's voice came over the intercom, tight with tension. I swung my legs over the pod's edge, taking in the stark medical bay. Rows of occupied cryopods lined the walls, their occupants blissfully unaware. Sometimes I envied them. As I made my way through the cramped corridors, fragments of memory assaulted me. Cybrid armies advancing, earth burning, the screams of the dying. I shook my head, trying to focus on the present. The ship buzzed with nervous energy. Crew members huddled in small groups, their voices low and urgent. I caught snippets of conversation as I passed. Water recyclers are failing again. Riots in the lower decks last week. How much longer can we keep running? I clenched my jaw. Forty years of fleeing and still the ghosts of our past hounded us. The Cybrids, our own creations, bent on exterminating their makers. We thought we were gods reshaping the human genome. Instead, we birthed our own destruction. The bridge doors slid open. Captain Tessa Frost stood at the main console, her face illuminated by holographic displays. She looked older than I remembered. Her eyes crinkled at the corners, hinting at years of leadership. Axel, she said, not looking up. We've got a situation. When don't we? I muttered, moving to her side. What is it this time? Cybrid scouts? Resource shortage? Frost brought up a new display on the console. We've detected a signal from an unexplored system. I frowned, studying the readout. Could be a trap. Could be salvation, countered a new voice. Dr. Nina Yang stepped out of the shadows. We can't keep running forever, Commander. Our population is dying. Genetic degradation. Dwindling resources. We need a new home. I turned to face her, and how many times have we thought we found one, only to run straight into Cybrid arms? We can't let fear paralyze us, Frost interjected. I'm calling a senior staff meeting to discuss our options. Axel, I want you to put together a recon team. If we decide to investigate, you'll be leading the mission. My mind already cycled through potential team members. Understood. But Captain, we need to approach this with extreme caution. We've been burned too many times. Noted, Frost said, her tone softening slightly. Get some rest, Axel. We'll convene in six hours. As I left the bridge, my thoughts churned. Hope was a dangerous thing out here in the black. It could blind you, make you take risks. But without it, what were we even running for? Back in my quarters, I stood before the small mirror, examining the network of scars crisscrossing my torso each one a reminder of battles fought, comrades lost. I traced the longest one, a jagged line from collarbone to hip, a parting gift from a cybrid assassin years ago. The stars outside my viewport seemed to mock me with their cold, distant light. Somewhere out there, our future awaited. I only hoped it wouldn't be the death of us all. A sharp knock interrupted my brooding. Dr. Yang stood in the doorway. Commander, it's time. I nodded, steeling myself for the meeting ahead. As we walked to the conference room, Yang spoke about genetic viability and dwindling resources. I half listened, my mind already racing through potential scenarios. The conference room was thick with tension when we arrived. Captain Frost stood at the head of the table. Around her, the senior staff shifted restlessly in their seats. Chief Engineer Takeda nervously tapped a stylus against his data pad. Security Chief Markov's scowl deepened with each passing second. As Yang and I took our seats, Frost cleared her throat. Thank you all for coming on such short notice. As you know, we've detected an anomalous signal from an unexplored system. What you don't know is the nature of this signal. She paused, her eyes sweeping the room. It appears to be of human origin. The senior staff meeting erupted into chaos the moment Captain Frost revealed the mysterious signal. Voices rose, overlapping in a cacophony of hope and fear. 
It's a trap! shouted Security Chief Markov, slamming his fist on the table. The Cybrids are getting craftier! We can't risk the entire fleet! Dr. Yang's eyes gleamed with an unsettling intensity. This could be our salvation. The genetic diversity we desperately need. We've been down this road before. I cut in, leveling a hard stare at Yang. False promises, ambushes, entire ships lost. Frost raised a hand, silencing the room. I understand the risks, but we're running out of options. Our resources are stretched to the breaking point. If there's even a chance of finding a new home, we have to take it. I leaned forward, choosing my words carefully. Then we proceed with extreme caution. A small recon team, in and out. We gather intel without committing the fleet. Frost nodded. Agreed. Trent, you'll lead the mission. Choose your team carefully. As the meeting adjourned, Dr. Yang cornered me in the corridor. Commander, a word. I bristled but followed her to a quiet alcove. Young's voice dropped to a whisper. Our situation is more dire than the captain lets on. The last batch of genetic screenings. The results are troubling. How bad? Yang's eyes darted, ensuring we weren't overheard. Increased rates of mutation, fertility issues. If we don't introduce new genetic material soon, we're looking at a population collapse within two generations. I absorbed the information. And you think this mystery signal is the answer? It's our best shot, Yang insisted. Whatever's out there, we need it. Desperately. I studied her face, searching for any hint of deception. Yang was brilliant, but her ethics had always been... flexible. I'll keep it in mind during the recon, but my priority is the safety of this fleet, Doctor. Don't forget that. Back in my quarters... I pulled up personnel files, assembling my team. Ren Kumar, young engineer with a knack for improvisation. Mira Sato, ex-military, now head of ship security, a cool head in a crisis. Kaiyang Medic, pessimist, but unparalleled in the field. A chime at my door interrupted my thoughts. Ren entered, practically vibrating with excitement. Commander! I heard rumors about the mission. Is it true? A new signal? I gestured for him to sit. It's true, and you're on the team if you're up for it. Ren's grin faltered. I... of course, sir, it's just... Last time... Last time we'd followed a mysterious signal, we'd lost an entire ship. Good people. Friends. I leaned forward, meeting Ren's eyes. It's okay to be scared, kid. Use that fear. It'll keep you sharp. Ren nodded, squaring his shoulders. I won't let you down, sir. As he left, I pulled up the mission briefing, but my focus drifted. Memories surfaced. The early days of the war, when we still thought we could win. The horrors we'd unleashed in desperation. The final, devastating push that forced us to flee Earth. An alert jolted me from my reverie. We were approaching the system. Showtime. In the shuttle bay, I addressed my team. Ren fidgeted with his toolkit, while Mira performed one last weapons check. Kai simply looked resigned. Listen up, I began. We go in quiet. Gather intel, assess threats. If anything feels off, we abort immediately. Clear? A chorus of affirmatives. As we boarded the shuttle, Captain Frost spoke over the comm. Godspeed, Trent. Bring our people home. The shuttle bay doors opened, revealing the star-studded void and we detached from the resilient. Ren's voice broke the tense silence. Commander, I'm picking up some strange energy readings from the planet's surface. I leaned over his console. Any match in our databases? Negative, sir. Mira's hand tightened on her rifle. Trap? I weighted our options. We've come too far to turn back now, but stay alert. Anything moves down there without my say-so. You shoot first and ask questions later. The shuttle breached the atmosphere and an alien landscape opened beneath us. Ruins of a long-dead civilization jutted from the barren earth like broken teeth. There, Kai pointed. Signs of recent activity. I saw it too. A cleared area. Structures that looked far too new. 
My gut screamed danger, but the promise of answers drove us onward. We touched down, secured the shuttle, and stepped onto alien soil. Ren, start scanning. Mira, perimeter check. Kai, analyze atmospheric samples. I want to know if we can breathe this air long term. They spread out, and I surveyed our surroundings. This place gave me the creeps. I had a strange feeling we were being observed. A sudden, high-pitched whine pierced the air. Ren shouted in alarm. Energy spike! Massive power surge! The ground beneath us erupted. A blinding light seared my retinas as I was thrown backward, the world spinning around me. Mira's voice cut through the chaos. Contact! Multiple hostiles! A wave of dizziness came over me. I saw Mira slump to the ground as my own vision began to darken. The last thing I remember was a group of figures in environmental suits approaching, their faces hidden behind opaque visors. I awoke in a white room strapped to an examination table. Fear flooded me as I thrashed against the restraints. Please remain calm, Commander Trent, a soft voice said. A man in a pristine lab coat stepped into view. I am Magistrate Ashford. Welcome to Eden. Where are my people? I demanded. Ashford's smile didn't reach his eyes. They are safe, I assure you. We had to take certain precautions. You understand, I'm sure. We can't risk contamination. Contamination? Yes. You see, Commander, Eden is a sanctuary. A place where humanity can start anew, free from the taint that led to the Cybrid War. We've worked hard to maintain genetic purity here. And what happens to those who don't meet your standards of purity? Ashford's expression hardened. They are given a choice. Submit to genetic resequencing or removal from the population. I thought of Dr. Yang's warnings about our fleet's genetic degradation. Was this the price of survival? And my team? Being processed as we speak, your engineer shows promise. The security officer, less so. As for you, Ashford studied a datapad. Your genetic profile is interesting. You could be quite valuable to our work here. I'm not interested in your eugenic fantasies, I spat. Ashford sighed. I had hoped you'd be more reasonable. No matter, you'll come around. They all do, in time. As he turned to leave, I called out, You're making the same mistakes that led to the Cybrids, playing God with human genes. Ashford paused at the door. No, Commander. We're correcting those mistakes. This time, we'll get it right. The door sealed behind him, leaving me alone with my thoughts. I tested my restraints, finding no give. Somewhere in this facility, Mira and Ren were facing their own ordeals. I had to find a way out to warn the fleet, but a treacherous part of my mind whispered, What if Ashford was right? What if this was our only chance at survival? I pushed the thought away. We'd already seen where that kind of thinking led. Our job now was to survive, to find a better way, and to do that, I needed to escape. I closed my eyes, steadying my breathing. There would be an opportunity, there always was, and when it came, I'd be ready. In the following days, I was subjected to endless tests and invasive procedures, each one chipping away at my resolve. But I kept my mind sharp, watching for patterns, weaknesses in their security. On the seventh day, a young lab tech entered my room. Her hands shook as she prepared to draw yet another blood sample. You're new, I said, keeping my voice low and calm. She jumped, nearly dropping the syringe. I... I'm not supposed to talk to you. What's your name? She hesitated, then whispered, Leah. Leah, I repeated. You don't seem comfortable here. Are you one of the pure ones, or... Her eyes widened in fear. Please, I can't... The door slid open, and Magistrate Ashford entered. Leah scrambled to finish her task and fled the room. Ashford's eyes followed her, a frown creasing his brow. Troublesome girl. Perhaps we were too lenient in her genetic corrections. Come to check on your prize specimen. He smiled thinly. Hardly. I've come to offer you a choice, Commander Trent. Your genetic profile is... unique. Resilient. 
With some modifications, you could be an asset to our community. What have you done with my team? Ashford's face was unreadable. The engineer has been integrated into our workforce. The security officer proved resistant. She's undergoing more intensive reconditioning. Rage boiled inside me, but I forced it down. I needed to play along for now. I want to see them. Impossible, Ashford said. But perhaps a gesture of good faith. Agree to preliminary gene therapy and I'll arrange a meeting with your engineer. It was a trap, obviously. But it was also an opportunity. I nodded slowly. All right. I'll do it. Ashford's smile widened. Excellent. We'll begin immediately. The next few hours were a haze of pain and nausea as they pumped me full of God knows what. But through it all, I clung to my purpose. I had to warn the fleet, had to stop this madness before it spread. When I came to, I was back in my room. Wren stood by the door, looking pale and drawn. Commander, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Are you all right? I sat up slowly, fighting a wave of dizziness. Been better. You... Wren's eyes darted nervously. They've got me working on their defense systems. It's incredible tech, but the things they're doing here, sir, it's not right. I know, I said. We need to get out of here. Wren nodded, then froze as footsteps approached. Magistrate Ashford entered, flanked by guards. I trust you've had a pleasant reunion. It's time for the engineer to return to his duties. As they led Wren away, a plan began to form in my mind. That night, when Leah came to check on me, I made my move. I feigned a seizure, drawing her close. In one swift motion, I pulled her down, using her access card to release my restraints. I'm sorry, I whispered as I rendered her unconscious. I slipped out of the room. The facility's corridors were a maze, but I was determined to find Mira and a way out. Years of military training kicked in as I moved silently, avoiding patrols and security cameras. As I rounded a corner, I heard muffled screams coming from a nearby room. Mira's voice. I gritted my teeth, anger surging through me. Whatever they were doing to her, I had to stop it. I approached the door, Leah's access card in hand. Just as I was about to swipe it, alarms went off. My escape had been discovered. Throwing caution to the wind, I swiped the card and burst into the room. Mira lay strapped to a table, surrounded by medical equipment. Her eyes widened when she saw me. Axel, what the hell took you so long? She growled. I quickly released her restraints. Better late than never. Can you walk? She stumbled as she stood. I can run if I have to. What's the plan? Find Wren. Get to the escape shuttle. Warn the fleet, I said, handing her a scalpel I'd grabbed from a nearby tray. We could hear shouts and footsteps approaching. I met Mira's gaze. Ready? She nodded grimly. Let's show these bastards what happens when you mess with the Resilience crew. The facility descended into chaos as Mira and I fought our way through the corridors. We encountered resistance at every turn. Guards armed with advanced stun weapons and researchers in hazmat suits trying to impede our progress. Left. Mira said, taking point. We rounded the corner, narrowly avoiding a burst of energy from a guard's weapon. I grabbed a fallen guard's stun baton, the unfamiliar weapon humming with power in my hand. We need to find Wren, I panted, as we ducked into an alcove for cover. Mira nodded. Any idea where they're keeping him? A familiar voice came over the loudspeaker. Attention all personnel, this is Magistrate Ashford. The contaminated subjects are attempting to escape. Initiate full lockdown procedures. We pressed on, dispatching guards and avoiding security measures. The further we went, the more unsettling our surroundings became. We passed laboratories filled with grotesque experiments, human bodies suspended in tanks, horrifically altered and mutated. My God, Mira whispered. What have they been doing here? A scream of pain echoed from a nearby room. We shared a look and moved towards it. Inside, we found Wren strapped to a chair, 
surrounded by medical equipment. A researcher stood over him, a syringe in hand. Step away from him, I growled, raising the stun baton. The researcher turned, eyes wide with fear. He dropped the syringe and backed away as Mira moved to free Ren. Getting Ren on his feet, we heard the alarms escalate. The facility's automated voice announced, Warning, containment breach in sectors 3 through 7. All personnel evacuate immediately. What's happening? Ren asked weakly. A distant roar answered his question, something inhuman filled with rage and pain. We need to run, I said urgently. As we ran through the facility, the true scale of the horror unfolded. Test subjects, driven mad by genetic tampering, had broken free in the chaos. The pristine halls of Eden had become a nightmare of violence and mutation. Fighting our way past the remaining guards, we finally reached the hangar where escape shuttles were docked. As I prepped for launch, Mira manned the weapon systems, holding off the encroaching horde of mutated colonists. Our shuttle broke through the planet's atmosphere, the false paradise of Eden shrinking behind us. Resilient, this is Commander Trent, I transmitted. Do you copy? We have a Code Black situation. Repeat, Code Black. Static crackled, then Captain Frost's voice came through, tense and wary. Trent, what the hell is going on down there? We've been picking up massive energy fluctuations from the planet's surface. Captain, we need immediate quarantine protocols. The colony, they've been experimenting with extreme genetic modification. It's all gone to hell. There was a pause then. Understood. Docking Bay 3 is prepped for quarantine. We'll debrief you there. As we approached the Resilient, I saw the massive ship had already begun emergency procedures. Weapon systems were powered up, and I could see crews in hazmat suits scrambling across the hull. We docked, and as soon as the airlock sealed, decontamination sprays hissed to life. A team in full containment gear rushed in, whisking Wren away on a stretcher. Mira and I were escorted to separate isolation rooms. Hours of tests and questions followed. I recounted everything, the false signal, the colony's true nature, the horrors we'd witnessed. Finally, Captain Frost entered my room. Your story checks out with the others, Trent, but we have a bigger problem. We've detected Cybrid scout ships at the edge of the system. It seems our old enemies caught wind of the commotion. This realization was shocking. Humanity tearing itself apart with genetic manipulation and the Cybrids circling like vultures ready to finish us off. We need to jump to hyperspace immediately, I said. Put as much distance between us and this nightmare as possible. Agreed. But once we're clear, we need to decide our next move. The crew is already divided on how to proceed. What are our options? I asked, dreading the answer. Some want to find another habitable planet and start over. Others argue we should return to Earth, face the Cybrids head on. And there's a faction that believes we should pursue our own genetic enhancements to level the playing field. I felt sick at the thought. After what we saw on Eden, that can't be an option. I agree, Frost said, but fear makes people consider desperate measures. I'm calling a council meeting as soon as we're clear. I want you there, Trent. We need your perspective on what happened planetside. I'll be there, but I want Mira present too and Ren if he's medically cleared. Agreed, Frost said. Get some rest, Commander. We jump in an hour, and the real battle begins after that. As she left, I sank onto the narrow bed in my isolation room. Sleep seemed impossible with the memories of Eden still fresh, with the knowledge of the challenges ahead. But I forced myself to close my eyes. Soon, we'd be thrust into a different kind of war, one fought with words and ideologies rather than weapons. We had to convince the fleet that genetic manipulation wasn't the answer, that there had to be another way to ensure humanity's survival. The path ahead was dark and uncertain, but we had no choice but to walk it. The alternative was extinction, either at the hands of the Cybrids or through our own misguided attempts to improve ourselves. The resilient emerged from hyperspace, the stars outside the viewport smearing back into pinpricks of light. 
I stood in the council chamber, surrounded by the ship's senior staff and faction representatives. Captain Frost called the meeting to order. We've bought ourselves some time, but we need to decide our next move. Commander Trent, please brief everyone on what you witnessed on Eden. I recounted the horrors we'd seen. The genetic experiments, the mutations, the madness that had consumed the colony. As I spoke, I watched the faces around the table. Some paled with shock, others hardened with resolve, and a few, disturbingly, showed interest. When I finished, the chamber erupted into chaos. Dr. Emerson, head of our genetics division, leaned forward. With all due respect, Commander, perhaps we're looking at this wrong. Eden's methods were crude, yes, but the concept... The concept is exactly what led to the Cybrids in the first place, Mira cut in, her voice sharp. She'd insisted on attending, despite her injuries. Have we learned nothing? The Cybrids were a mistake, Emerson countered. But controlled genetic enhancement could be our salvation. We could adapt to new environments, increase our resistance to diseases, and lose our humanity in the process, I interjected. I saw what your controlled enhancements did on Eden. It's a line we can't uncross. Chief Engineer Takeda cleared his throat. What about returning to Earth? Our long-range scans suggest the Cybrid presence has diminished. If we could reclaim our homeworld, and risk leading them straight back to what's left of humanity? Security Chief Markov scoffed. No, we need to find a new home. Start fresh. The debate raged on, factions forming and dissolving as arguments were made and countered. I watched Captain Frost, noting the weariness in her eyes. She'd been holding this fractious fleet together through sheer force of will for years. Finally, she raised a hand for silence. We've heard the arguments. Now we need to make a decision. We can't keep running forever. I took a deep breath, knowing what I had to say wouldn't be popular. Captain, with your permission. She nodded, and I addressed the room. We're asking the wrong questions. It's not about where we go or how we change ourselves. It's about who we are, what makes us human. Eden showed us the cost of forgetting that. We need to find a way forward that doesn't compromise our essential humanity. Murmurs filled the room, some agreeing, others skeptical. Dr. Emerson leaned back, a calculating look in his eyes that made me uneasy. Captain Frost nodded slowly. Commander Trent is right. We'll put it to a vote. Three options. Seek a new home and maintain our current course. Return to Earth and face whatever we find there. Or... She hesitated. Pursue genetic adaptation. The tension in the room ratcheted up as people cast their votes. I held my breath, acutely aware that this moment could determine the future of our species. As the results came in, Frost's face remained impassive. By a narrow margin, the decision is to seek a new home. We'll begin long-range scans immediately. I caught sight of Dr. Emerson slipping out of the room, his expression unreadable. Something told me this fight was far from over. As the council dispersed, Mira approached me. This isn't the end of it, she muttered. Emerson and his supporters won't give up easily. I nodded grimly. We'll need to keep a close eye on them. Any word on Wren? Still in medical, but improving. He's been asking for you. I'll visit him soon, I promised. Right now, we need to... An alarm cut through the air, sending ice through my veins. It was a sound I hadn't heard in years, one I'd hoped never to hear again. Captain Frost's voice came over the intercom, tight with tension. All hands to battle stations. Cybrid fleet detected on long-range scanners. This is not a drill. I bolted towards the hangar as the alarms wailed, dodging crew members rushing past. Trent! Mira's voice filtered through my comm. I'm prepping Raptor Squadron. Get your ass to your fighter. I vaulted into the cockpit of my Viper, fingers moving over the pre-flight checklist. The canopy hissed shut as the hangar bay doors opened, revealing the expanse of space and the threat of the Cybrid mothership. Captain Frost's voice cut through the chaos. All fighters engage defensive formation Delta. 
Buy us time to recharge the jump drive. Estimated time to jump, 47 minutes. Roger that, I responded, guiding my Viper out of the bay. Raptor Squadron, on me. Let's give these bastards a warm welcome. The void erupted into chaos as cybrid fighters poured from their mothership like angry hornets. Their biomechanical designs mirrored our own craft, highlighting humanity's hubris. Break and engage, I ordered, duking hard to avoid a barrage of plasma fire. My targeting computer locked onto the nearest cybrid, and I squeezed the trigger. My rounds tore through its hull, causing it to erupt in a silent explosion. All around me, the battle raged. Human and cybrid fighters danced a deadly waltz, energy weapons and projectiles crisscrossing the starfield. The resilience point defense systems blazed, creating a protective web of fire around the massive ship. Watch your six, Trent! Mira's voice rang out. I barrel rolled just in time to see a cybrid fighter scream past, its weapons barely missing me. Mira's Viper appeared in my rear view, unleashing a salvo that reduced the cybrid to space rubble. Thanks for the save, I grunted, already locking onto my next target. The battle wore on, a war of attrition that we couldn't afford to lose. Our squadron's chatter became punctuated by screams cut short and the stark silence of lost comrades. Resilient to all fighters, Frost's voice was tense. Jump drive at 75%, hold the line. A massive explosion rocked the resilient. I watched in horror as one of our primary weapon banks went dark crippled by a coordinated cybrid assault. Raptors three and four, form up on me. We're going to clear that blind spot. We dove towards the resilience hull, weaving through wreckage and crossfire. A group of cybrid fighters had breached the defensive perimeter, hammering at the ship's vulnerable flank. Light them up, I ordered, unleashing everything my Viper had. We tore through the cybrid formation, but not without cost. Raptor four erupted into a fireball, the pilot's cut-off scream haunting the comm channel. Jump drive at 90%, Frost announced. All fighters, begin return sequence. You heard the captain, I called out. Fall back to the resilient, covering fire pattern Omega. We fought our way back to the hangar bay, each second an eternity as more of our fighters fell to cybrid weapons. The resilient's hull was scarred and blackened, entire sections exposed to vacuum. As my Viper touched down, the ship shook violently. Cybrid Mothership is powering up its main cannon, someone shouted over the comm. Jump drive ready, engineering reported, their voice strained. All hands, brace for jump, Frost commanded. The familiar disorientation of a hyperspace jump came over me, just as a blinding beam of energy lanced out from the Cybrid Mothership. We'd escaped by mere seconds. As reality reasserted itself, I climbed out of my battered fighter. The hangar bay was a scene of controlled chaos, medics rushing to tend to wounded pilots, damage control teams battling electrical fires. Mira approached, her flight suit stained with hydraulic fluid and sweat. We made it, she said. I nodded grimly, surveying the decimated squadron. We'll mourn later. Right now, we need to regroup, assess the damage. We'd survived this encounter, but with each battle, each jump, our chances of long-term survival grew slimmer. The corridors of the resilient buzzed with a nervous energy in the days following our narrow escape from the Cybrids. What should have been relief at our survival instead festered into a breeding ground for fear and discontent. I found myself mediating yet another heated argument in the mess hall. We can't keep running forever, a young engineer named Talia insisted, her voice rising. We need to adapt, to evolve, and become the very thing we're running from, countered Sergeant Cole, his scarred face twisted in disgust. No, we return to Earth, face the Cybrids on our own turf. I stepped between them before things could escalate further. Enough, we're all on edge but turning on each other is exactly what the Cybrids want. As I left the mess, Mira fell into step beside me. It's getting worse, Axel, she murmured. Emerson's been holding secret meetings. I don't like it. I nodded grimly. Keep an eye on him. We can't afford another Eden situation. In the medical bay, I found Wren propped up in bed, his face pale but his eyes alert. 
Commander, he greeted me. Any news on the Eden tech we brought back? Nothing concrete, I replied. How are you holding up? Ren's expression darkened. The things they did there, Axel, I can't shake it, but I think I've figured out part of their genetic sequencing algorithm. If we could modify it, no. I cut him off, perhaps too sharply. That's a road we can't go down, Ren. Not even a step. As I left, I sensed that the temptation of Eden's technology was spreading like a virus through the fleet. On the bridge, I found Captain Frost hunched over a console. How are we doing? I asked. She straightened, rubbing her temples. Not good. We're down to 60% fuel reserves, and the last cybrid attack damaged our food production systems. I've had to implement stricter rationing. The civilians won't like that, I warned. They'll like starving even less, Frost retorted. We need a win, Trent. Something to give these people hope. As if on cue, the console screens flashed with an alert. For a heart-stopping moment, I feared another cybrid attack. But the tactical officer's voice rang out with a different kind of urgency. Captain, long-range scanners have detected a planetary body. Initial readings suggest it's habitable. The bridge erupted into activity. As Frost barked orders for more detailed scans, I caught her eye. A glimmer of hope shone there, tempered by caution. Don't celebrate yet, she muttered, but if this pans out, a habitable planet could be our salvation. Or the spark that ignites the powder keg of tensions aboard the fleet. As news of the planet spread, I could feel the shift in the air. Hope, that most dangerous of emotions, began to take root, but with it came an intensification of the factional disputes. The debate was no longer theoretical. We had a real destination to argue over. Dr. Emerson cornered me outside the council chamber, his eyes feverish with excitement. Commander, you must see reason. This planet is our chance to implement controlled genetic adaptation. We could tailor ourselves to thrive there. I pushed past him, my patience wearing thin. The Council will decide our course of action, Doctor. Not you. The Resilient dropped out of hyperspace, the blue-green orb of the planet filling our view screens. A collective gasp rippled through the bridge crew. After years of desolate worlds and hostile environments, the sight of something so Earth-like was almost painful in its beauty. Preliminary scans confirm breathable atmosphere, the science officer reported. Gravity 0.98 Earth standard, vast oceans, diverse flora, it's perfect. Captain Frost's eyes narrowed. Almost too perfect. Trent, I want you to lead the initial recon team. We can't risk the entire fleet until we're sure. The debate over who would join the landing party was fierce. In the end, my team consisted of Mira for security, Ren for his technical expertise, Dr. Yang for biological analysis, and somewhat controversially, Dr. Emerson. To keep an eye on him, Frost had muttered. As our shuttle pierced the atmosphere, I felt a tension I hadn't even realized I was carrying begin to ease. The vast expanse of green below us was a balm to eyes too long accustomed to the grey of ship interiors. We sat down in a clearing near the edge of a forest, beside a lake so clear it mirrored the alien sky above. As the hatch opened, we were hit with a wall of scents. Rich earth, unfamiliar flora, the tang of fresh water. Ren stumbled, overwhelmed. It smells like life, he whispered. Fan out, I ordered fighting to keep my own composure. Standard procedures. No one touches anything without clearance. We moved cautiously into the tree line. The forest was a riot of colors. The leaves were a rich purple and an eye-catching blue with flowers that appeared to light up from within. Small creatures, vaguely reptilian but feathered, scattered at our approach. Axel, look at this, Mira called. She stood before a massive tree, its bark spiralled in complex patterns, and there, unmistakably, were marks. Tool marks. Intelligent life, Dr. Yang breathed, running her scanner over the cuts. Primitive, but definitely tool users. A twig snapped behind us, 
We turned, weapons raised, to find ourselves facing a group of hunters. They were unmistakably human. For a long moment, we stared at each other in mutual shock. They were dressed in simple leather garments armed with spears and stone knives. Their faces were painted in intricate swirls, but the features beneath were familiar. Then to our utter astonishment, one of the hunters spoke. Who are you? He asked in perfect, if somewhat archaic English. Are you from Earth? We stood there dumbfounded. It was Emerson who found his voice first. You speak our language. How is this possible? The tall woman at the front of the group stepped forward, her eyes fierce but curious. We are the descendants of the Artemis, she said. Our ancestors fled Earth generations ago, seeking a new home. Are you... Have you come from the old world? The implications hit me. The Artemis, one of the first colony ships long thought lost. They had made it, after all. We're refugees like your ancestors, I said, lowering my weapon. Earth, Earth is gone, overrun by our own creations. A ripple of murmurs went through the group of hunters. The woman who had spoken looked stricken. Then the nightmares our elders speak of. They came true? I nodded grimly. The Cybrids. But that's a long story. I'm Commander Axel Trent. We come in peace, seeking a new home. The woman nodded slowly. I am Sora, lead hunter of the River Clan. Come, our elders will want to hear your tale. These people were a living link to our past. They were also, potentially, our salvation. But as I watched Dr. Emerson's eyes gleam with barely concealed excitement, I knew that our arrival could also spell the end of their way of life. We carried with us the weight of our history, our conflicts, our ambitions. How could we integrate without destroying the very thing that made this place so precious? As the sun began to set, painting the alien sky in hues of lavender and gold, I sent a message back to the resilient. Captain, we've made contact. You're not going to believe this, but we've found the Artemis colony. We've found home. The response when it came was heavy with the magnitude of the moment. Understood, Commander. Proceed with utmost caution. The future of both our peoples may rest on what happens next. As Sora led us through the forest, we emerged into a clearing where a small village stood. Simple wooden structures and animal hide tents dotted the area, smoke rising from central fire pits. The villagers gathered, their expressions a mix of curiosity and caution. An elderly man stepped forward. I am Dalen, chief of the River Clan. Sora tells me you come from the stars as our ancestors did. I nodded, introducing our team. We're refugees like your forebears. Earth has fallen to machines of our own creation. Dalen's eyes closed briefly, pain etching his features. Then the great calamity our legend spoke of has come to pass. Come, sit with us. We have much to discuss. Around the central fire, Dalen recounted their history. Our ancestors fled Earth aboard the Artemis, fearing the path of unchecked technological advancement. They found this world and made a solemn vow to live in harmony with nature, to never again risk the mistakes of the past. Dr. Emerson leaned forward, his eyes gleaming. But surely some technology... Dalen raised a hand, silencing him. We have renounced all advanced technology. It is the cornerstone of our society, our very way of life. If you wish to join us, you must do the same. No machines, no devices from your ship. You must live as we do, as one with the land. I looked at my team, seeing the conflict in their eyes. Mira nodded slowly, a look of peace settling over her features. Ren fidgeted, torn between his love of tech and the allure of this simpler life. Dr. Yang stood abruptly. This is madness. We can't abandon everything we've worked for, everything we are. It's not abandonment, I said quietly. It's a choice, a new path. The debate raged through the night. In the end, our team and the fleet was divided. Some, like myself, Mira and surprisingly Ren, chose to stay. Others, including Dr. Yang and Dr. Emerson, 
couldn't accept the terms. As dawn broke, I stood with my new clan, watching the shuttle prepare for departure. Captain Frost's voice came over the comm one last time. Are you sure about this, Trent? I looked at the village behind me, at the untamed beauty of this world. I'm sure, Captain. This is where I belong now, but be careful out there. Don't let them repeat our mistakes. The unspoken them hung in the air. Yang, Emerson, and the others who saw genetic manipulation as the only way forward. As the shuttle lifted off, carrying with it the last vestiges of our old life, I felt a profound mix of emotions. Sadness for the division of our people, fear for what the future might hold for those who left, but also hope. Hope that here, in this simpler life, we might find the peace that had eluded humanity for so long. Sora approached, handing me a roughly hewn spear. Are you ready to learn our ways, Axel of the Stars? I grasped the spear, feeling the weight of my decision. I am, I replied, turning my back on the departing shuttle and facing my new home. As we walked into the village, I knew the path ahead would be challenging. We had chosen to step back from the precipice of technology that had nearly destroyed us. But the shadow of the Cybrids still loomed in the back of my mind. Would this simpler life be enough to save us if they ever found this world? Only time would tell. For now, we had a new life to build, a new balance to find. And perhaps in doing so, we might rediscover what it truly means to be human. <laughs>